Hey, what's up guys? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. I wanna just talk a little bit about my first day as a Python developer, because I just thought about it right now. I was walking with Frankie, our D-Rock, and I was like, we were having a conversation, and I thought about it, and we thought it would be a cool experience to share, so I'm gonna do that. We're like, let's roll the camera, let's do it. My first day at work was pretty freaking cool. Uh, it, I had to go through lots, a long process for actually getting my first client, and it actually happened from an ad I posted on Craigslist. And that ad was specifically an ad I posted for me presenting my services as a tutor. All right? Me presenting my services as a Python tutor for, I don't know, 35 to $50 an hour, something like that. What ended up happening was I get, got a call from somebody and they're like, hey, we're local to you and we just need somebody who can do this something. We heard this might need Python to fix it, but we need a login system and we need an authentication system and we need this, that, and the other thing. And at that time, I was only about three months into my coding, three to five months into my coding uh, skills, coding experience. You know, I was kind of a beginner at that time. And what I ended up doing was, you know, normally any person who only has such little experience and is given such a giant task would do. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll do it. And that's when the craziest journey began. And I didn't know anything about Python. I didn't know anything about full stack development. I didn't know anything about Django. I didn't know about how databases work. I didn't know anything about how to negotiate pricing with the client. I didn't know how to propose a contract. I didn't know about NDA agreements. I didn't know about how to present a timeline or do value-based pricing. I mean, I can just list all the million things I didn't know. At this point, I was like a beginner slash intermediate developer because I was just focusing on the technical skills. But the one thing I did do was say yes. And there was a whole like crazy amount of things that we ended up going through. I picked up tons of skills on my own because I knew I was under the gun to learn fast. And I picked up insane amount of skills in a really short amount of time. Got to, um, I got to the interview. The interview went really well. And uh, there were some negotiations there that went also really well too. And I remember that I was super scared, but I went and spoke with my mentor. My mentor told me, charge them $100 an hour. And so that was a really, really scary call to make because they were already paying me. They were willing to pay me $70 an hour. And when I told my dad that I'm negotiating up to $100 an hour, he got so mad when he was talking. When I got home, he was like, he, he said it in Urdu, and uh, he, he just, he said like, he said something along, he's like, Namakaram, he's like, Basically, what he was trying to get at was, I'm getting paid enough already, why am I asking them for more? So, you know, my dad is a man about integrity and honor and mm, doing things the hard way. So when he heard me being this privileged freaking American kid, was like, it's my first job, dad, but you know what? I'm gonna fucking go for $100 an hour. What he didn't realize was that I was, for me, like personally, it was about preparing for really difficult situations. And if I can handle the stress and pressure of getting my first job, you know, and being able, like this job, everything dependent on, for example. If I didn't get this job, I wouldn't be able to help my mom or my dad, which was my initial goal. I wouldn't be able to help myself and live a cool ass lifestyle, which was also a huge goal. Hang out with my friends, have the car that I want, be able to hang out with the girlfriend that I want. Like there are so many things that depended on this. And um, so there was a lot of pressure internally, and then I was going to college at that time. You know, I was going to Oakton Community College. So I had to do great in college too, and I didn't have enough money to go to college. But I still negotiated because, principally speaking, if I do the really, really, really difficult thing now, 
then I can actually handle it when there are bigger moments where negotiation skills are required, when the pressure is higher, right? So if you get used to an, a brutal amount of pressure earlier on and you practice it, because it's a muscle, confrontation, negotiation, it's a muscle. Once you get better at it, you can do insane amount of things. You can withstand a lot of pressure in life and that will determine the quality of your life as well. I, I firmly believe the amount of pressure you're willing to withstand, that's exactly proportional to the success you're going to have in your life. Anyways, I ended up getting this job at $100 an hour, which is dope. And uh, the first day I went in, I'll put some pictures of, I'll try to find if, I'll see if I can find the picture of me going in the car. I have a picture of the first day at office and they actually set me up in their office. They let me put my little coat on the chair. They sent the IT guy to bring my, uh, to, to get my um, monitor, which was so cool. I mean, <laughs> not for the IT guy, but it was really cool for me. They respected me so much, it was my first day. You know, the boss like asked me if I wanted water and it blew my mind that holy crap, you know, these people are doing such important jobs and I, it's my first day and I'm, I still felt like a kid and they're giving me so much respect and they're sending their full-time employees to like fetch things for me. And so I was even feeling a little weirded out about that. I didn't know how to think about it, but that was a pretty dope part of it that they were giving me so much massive amounts of respect because I was kind of the only developer they had, you know, and I didn't realize at the time. So they, they brought in, they set up my monitor, and uh, I don't know if you can see some of the code on the screen, but it's literally like some garbage flask code. And I was literally going through Miguel Grinberg's beginner Python flask tutorial while I was at this job. So they were paying me for a skill that I didn't even have at that point. But the skills that I did have is I was reliable, my communication was awesome, I always said yes, and I showed up for everything. So they're like, okay, let's give him a chance, you know? So I learned those skills on the fly, like I learned how databases work, I learned how Flask works, I learned like, okay, well that's a full stack developer, what they do, and I learned it super fast because I was under the gun, and it was exciting. For me, this is exciting. Then I realized Django might be a better framework for their job so I can work with my client in an easier way, faster way, meet the deadlines. I mean, if you even look at Django's homepage, they call the framework, they say Django. Uh, it's for perfectionists with deadlines. You know, it's like beautiful. And that's exactly what I ended up discovering. The same stuff that I would spend forever building in Node.js or some other programming language or even freaking um, Fl uh, Flask in Python. With Django, I could build their login system and their authentication system and their uh, invoicing app. Everything, I could build it a lot faster. Django comes with a lot of built-in tools and technologies. And I realized that that's what, you know, when I was making their invoicing app and I was creating the front end, meaning like the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like the graphical stuff that you see, you know, you point and click on. If you go on Instagram.com right now, all the stuff you can see and hover over and click, that's all your front end stuff. But then when you actually hit a like and it says now in this picture has 232 likes, that's being stored in a database somewhere. So then when you come back, it still says 232 likes, right? It doesn't go back to zero. It, it's not that it just forgets, it remembers it somewhere. That's what it means to have a database. Database is what allows you to save stuff. Okay, database is like equivalent of having a memory card back in the day when people used to play games. They needed a memory card, do you remember that? A database is like on your phone, the place that allows you to store your stuff locally. The database is just online. So I had to learn all these things and uh, yeah, it was just a really fascinating experience. And then two months of working with them, I ended up getting a pretty awesome check of about I mean, it wasn't just one check. I, I was invoicing them on a weekly basis. I'll show you guys my invoice too, right here. And I ended up getting a $20,000 check from them, which was super dope. And this was while I was traveling, while I went skydiving, while I saw my nephew. I mean, I was still putting in work. One of the times my mom was at the hospital, so I actually worked 
from the hospital, which was super cool because like she would just go to bed and be asleep, you know, and be in the in her healing process. I'll just kick my feet up and I'll just be working from my laptop and just coding shit up and then getting paid for it. And when she would wake up, I could just focus on her and put the code stuff away. So it's, I wasn't realizing at this time, at that time, how amazing it was to be able to do that. Because to me, it almost felt wrong. It felt like I was playing a video game and I was getting paid for it. Literally felt like I was playing Street Fighter or Gears of War because you're creating stuff. It's so fun. And then somebody is paying you for what you want to do. I'm like, okay, so this is the greatest job ever. So I'm doing what I want. I have my own client. Okay, I had, I was in between that client and some other clients. I had the ability to choose my own hours of when I work. They didn't care when I worked. They just cared as long as they got done. And then eventually I even hired other developers who started doing work for me, but that's a little bit more advanced. So that whole journey of me getting my first job as a Python developer, me learning how full stack works and being able to do their job at that time, then that led to me getting more clients. That first job was what changed everything for me. You know, that step-by-step -step process, those exact skills of how I landed that freelancing client, the exact technical skills I needed, not more, not less, the exact amount of technical skills I needed to land that client and deliver high quality work for them. I still delivered really high quality work. But what this allowed me to do is not waste any extra time learning any extra thing that I didn't need to learn. It was the fastest path to the fastest learning and the fastest amount of income growth, okay? And that's the intersection you wanna be at. And that's why I'm like, okay, how can we make something like this which provides value to everyone in the community? Clever programmer, I can, my main goal was to provide something so it can provide value to who I used to be. If it could just help the older me cross that path. And I got together with my team, we spent a few years and we built an incredible course which is designed to help you go through this exact same journey. Help you, the, teach you the full stack skills and the freelancing skills to be able to do what I did. To hopefully be able to get the paycheck that I got, maybe less, maybe more. That is up to you, the clients, all that. You know, I can't control that. But I just did the best I could to just go through my entire journey and just be able to help you repeat that process down to exactly what ad you should run, down to exactly what your LinkedIn profile should look like, down to exactly how to apply for these jobs, down to exactly the specific skills you need to become a full stack developer. I also teach you Django and Python, the same tool that I use to complete their job. I wanna teach it to you. I wanna show you how to invoice people and charge the clients what you're worth and be able to charge between 35 or 75, $150 an hour. I don't wanna say this is something you can do. This is only something you can do if you put in a lot of hard work and follow a step-by-step -step system. Everybody's gonna make their own amount of money. This is something I just wanted to put together that'll help you and guide you in that process, okay? So if this is fascinating to you, this is interesting, uh, click the link below. I've, I've put together this program. You can go to it. The enrollment, if it's closed, then when you go, you can enroll, but you can join the wait list. And if it's open, then you have the chance to jump in and join now. Either way, I think it's a fascinating and uh, I think it's a fantastic program. We spent so much time building it and it's incredible. It has interviews with some of the best developers in the world. It shows you the exact path to go from zero to actually making your income. I would strongly urge you to check it out, you know, even if you're a little bit curious. And if you're on the fence, then think about jumping in, all right? I would love to see you inside. Click on the link below. You're awesome, I'm awesome. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your face. This is Kazi and I'll see you inside the course. Click the link, let's do this.